Welcome to day two, power series. Today we're going to try to understand the definition of a power series, find the radius and interval of convergence of a power series, and then determine if the endpoints converge. This will all make sense in a moment. So yesterday we saw that the higher the degree of the approximating polynomial, the better the approximation. A power series can be used to exactly represent a function. So yesterday we did like polynomials and we would go to like the fourth, the fifth polynomial. Now we're going to do a series, a power series. So that means that we're adding an infinite number of terms. And so that will be an exact representation of the function. This is in your notes. We must start with the definition of a power series. In this first example, this is a power centered series centered at zero. In the second uh, example, we see a power series centered at C, where C is some constant. The radius and interval of convergence. A power series in X can be viewed as a function and the domain of that function are all values of x for which the series converges. C will always lie in the domain of f. In other words, C always has to lie uh, within that interval of convergence. So we're looking for all values of x that will make the series converge. A series can converge at a single point meaning that it only converges when x is equal to 2 or when x is equal to 1. It can converge on an interval such as it can converge when x is between negative 1 and 3. Or it can converge for all real numbers. To determine if a series converge, we're going to use the ratio test. If you recall from the ratio test, if the absolute value of the limit is less than 1, then the series converges. So that's what we're going to be looking for. So a series can converge only at its center. That's one possibility. Again, it could converge for some interval, or it could converge for all values of x. The number r is the radius of convergence. Um, if it converges only at a point, then the radius of convergence is zero. If it converges for all real numbers, then the radius of convergence is infinity. The set of all values for which x converge is called the interval of convergence. This is all in your notes. Just read it and ask questions. We'll go over this again in class tomorrow. Um, I just want to show you how to find it. So to find the radius of convergence, and this is in your notes, we're going to use the ratio test. So remember, recall that the ratio test says that we add 1 to n and then divide by the original function. And if it's going to converge, then this value, the limit as n approaches infinity of this value, has to be less than 1. If we simplify this, we can see that the 3's will cancel and the x minus 2 would cancel. So what we have left is x minus 2 has to be less than 1. If you recall from Algebra 2, I think, or Common Core 2, and you may have learned this differently, but the way I like to set this up is by making a, a, an interval. So that means if it's because it's the absolute value, that means that negative 1 has to be less than x minus 2, which has to be less than 1. If we solve for x, we then get that x must be between 1 and 3. That is our interval of convergence. Our radius of convergence, however, is 1. The radius, to find the radius of convergence, we would do 3 minus 1 divided by 2. And that gives us our radius of convergence. You want to think of the radius of convergence just like the radius of a circle. Like 1 to 3 is the diameter, if that makes sense. So from 1 to 3, so the diameter of that circle would be 2, but its radius is 1. So that's kind of the way we want to think of the radius of convergence. Let's do another example. Again, we're going to use the ratio test. So we're going to add 1 to all of the ends. 
I took a shortcut there and I've already multiplied by the reciprocal. Simplifying again, notice when we have x to the squared n plus 1, notice that we have to distribute that 2 to get x to the 2n plus 2 plus 1. That's how I got x to the 2n plus 3. We can um, simplify further. Notice that the 2n plus 3 factorial, notice how that um, multiplies out. The negative 1 to the n cancels. x to the 2n would cancel. Um, 2n plus 1 factorial cancels. That x in the denominator, and there's x cubed in the numerator, that's how we got the x squared. So I think that's all the canceling that we can do. So we're left with the limit as x as n approaches infinity of 2n plus 3 um, times 2n plus 1, and this is less than 1. Now, we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity. So it has nothing to do with that x. You want to think of that x in this case like a constant. So as n goes towards infinity, n is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and x is remaining the same. So the limit as n goes towards infinity would be 0. And now we have 0 is less than 1. Well, 0 is always less than 1, so that means that it's going to converge for all real numbers. The value of x doesn't matter. This will always converge. Because the um, interval of convergence is from negative infinity to infinity, the radius of convergence is always also infinity. Once again, we're finding the interval of convergence. Now, when we um, before we find the radius of convergence, when we find the interval of convergence, we also need to look at the endpoints. So once again, we're going to start with the ratio test, and we're adding n plus 1 to everything and then multiplying by the reciprocal. And we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity. And what we're going to see is that the x to the n's cancel, the n and the n plus 1 cancel, and we have the absolute value of x is less than 1, which gives us negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. Now, we need to test and see if it will converge on the endpoint. So we're going to take the, the endpoint, negative 1, and we're going to um, evaluate the original series at negative 1. I am replacing the x in the original series with negative 1. Now, the first thing you should notice here is that now it has become an alternating series. And because it's an alternating series and we take the limit as n approaches infinity, we get 0. We know that this will cause it to converge. Now we're going to check the endpoint of 1. When I replace 1, when I replace x with 1 in the original series, I get 1 to the n over n. This is a p series and it diverges by p series because 1 of the over n diverges. So our interval of a convergence, it includes negative 1, but it does not include 1. Our radius of convergence is also 1. Okay, and again, we find that radius of conversion by doing 1 minus negative 1, which gives me 2, divided by 2. Or half the distance between negative 1 and 1 is the radius of convergence. Okay, let's do another example. Again, we're going to use the ratio test. We add n plus 1 to everything. We simplify. And we see what's going to cancel out. So we see 2 to the n cancels. We see that um, negative 1 to the n cancels x plus 1 to the n cancel, and so we're, we're left with x plus 1 over 2. 
once again, we set up our inequality. And the reason I have x plus 1 is less than 2, I multiplied both sides by 2. Then I'm going to set that up as negative 2 is less than x plus 1 is less than 2. Subtract 1 from both sides, and I get negative 3 is less than x is less than 1. Now I have to check my endpoints. Now my radius of convergence, we didn't ask for that, but our radius of conversion is 2. Why? The distance between negative 3 and 1 is 4, and half of that is 2. So that's my radius of convergence. We still have to check the endpoints. So I start by checking negative 3. Replacing x in, with negative 3 in the original expression gives me this, which simplifies. Now I have to be very careful with when I have the negative 1 to the n times negative 2 to the n. Remember, if they have the same power, we can multiply the bases together. So this becomes 1 to the nth, because negative 1 to the nth times negative 2 to the nth is positive 2 to the nth. And since we have, <clears throat> sorry, positive 2 to the nth at the top and, and positive 2 to the nth at the bottom, that simplifies to 1 to the nth. 1 to the nth will not converge. So that diverges by the nth term test. Now I have to check 1. Now what I have is negative 1 to the nth over 2 to the nth over 2 to the nth. Well, the 2 to the nth once again cancels, and I have negative 1 to the nth. But negative 1 to the nth will not converge. That diverges as well. That diverges by the alternating series test or by the nth term test. Choose You pick whichever one you like, but it diverges. So I would say that <coughs> excuse me, my interval of convergence is negative 3 to 1, excluding both negative 3 and 1. And my radius of convergence is 2. All righty. I would strongly suggest that you pause this and do this on your own and then bring it back. Okay? All right. So let's look at one more. Again, we're going to use the ratio test. Multiplying that out, the x to the n's cancel. Um, n plus 1 squared will cancel with n plus 1, and we have the absolute value of x is less than 1. So once again, we have to check the endpoints. Now, n, 1 over n squared converges. So it, when it alternates, it will converge. But even if it doesn't alternate, it will converge. So negative 1 and 1 are both included in our interval of convergence, and our radius of convergence is 1. Okay, so basically, you should be able to use the ratio test, test to find the radius of convergence, and always remember to check your endpoints. That is probably the biggest mistake stake students make, is forgetting to check the endpoints. Okay, so check the endpoints. Also, when you're doing this on a free response question, and more than likely this will be a free response question, you have to remember to write, write the limit as n approaches infinity at each step. Okay, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.